visitors from different corners of the world. Uh, uh, it is indeed a proud privilege for me, a uh, professor, that um, to be part of the uh, UPRO for, uh, for inviting me, Professor Elizabeth Lucas uh, from UK, and to bring me on board uh, to speak uh, on this particular topic today, the relationships are the catalyst for the socio-economic development. And uh, <clears throat> I also would like to thank all the listeners from uh, different uh, corners, from India, from UK, from Nigeria, from South Africa, from various parts of the world. Uh, I also would like to acknowledge the presence of our uh, senior colleague, uh, Professor uh, Akub Pavio, who speak uh, uh, about the human relationships uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, without taking much time, ladies and gentlemen, there is a lot to talk about the on the important topic of this master class. And uh, I would also applaud the Yes UK International for the wonderful work they are doing, uh, bringing all the experts and uh, senior people to share their experiences, knowledge, wisdom, and uh, wonderful insights on different subjects, particularly with regard to the human relationships. We will, I as an economics professor, I can talk a lot about economics. I can talk a lot about finance. I can talk a lot about business management and entrepreneurship and so on. But human relationships are very crucial actually that can encompass us, that can try to become a catalyst for the all other subjects in this world. There could be medical doctors, there could be engineers, there could be lawyers, there could be financial experts, there could be artificial intelligence, machine learning experts, and there could be entrepreneurs or global leaders, political leaders, and so on. But all of us, we need one thing, that is human relationships. If the human relationships are not uh, uh, good enough or strong enough, the society that we are living with, of the economy that we are depending upon and the politics or political system that we are uh, also connected with, they all will collapse. So therefore uh, human relations uh, plays a crucial role. And therefore I chose the topic that it is a catalyst for the socio-economic development of the entire development process of this world. So before I take you on, on to that particular topic, I would like to uh, unfold certain facts and figures that are also related to our human relationships. I want us to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, the world that we are living in today, uh, the size of the world is about 510 million square kilometers land, roughly. From this 510 million square kilometers land, we have got about 149 million square kilometers land, which is a land without water and so on. So this is the physical space of the land. From this 149 million square kilometers, we have got more than 200 countries that are uh, situated in different continents. All the seven continents that we talk about are located in different corners of the world. And uh, then, meaning that we have got 76% of this world is covered by the water. Pacific Ocean itself is the uh, largest ocean which covers about 168 million square kilometers land. And then the last ocean, uh, probably Arctic Ocean, which covers about 14 million square kilometers land. Now, of course, in between we have got the ocean like uh, Atlantic where uh, it is coming from Cape Town to America. And that Atlantic Ocean covers more than 90 million square kilometers. And the Indian Ocean starting from Australia to Cape Town is also covering about 78 million square kilometers. So now we understand the geographical aspects of the globe, how it looks like. When we look at the other side, we have got uh, over 200 countries uh, and largest countries uh, none other than uh, Russia, which covers more than 17.2 million square kilometers land, which is massive, almost double the size of Canada and almost double the size of uh, America and almost double the size of uh, Brazil and uh, China as well. So 
so when we come to the other side of the population in this world, we have got the population more than 8 billion people living on this planet. So 8 billion people, majority of them coming from Asian continent, for instance, largely populated country like uh, India, where it has got uh, 1.42 billion people living in Indian subcontinent alone. China used to be the largest populated country in the world uh, from 1950 to last year, 2022. And recently, a few months ago, India has taken over that uh, position of being the largest populated country in the world. Of course, although the difference between China and India is so not big enough, it's about eight plus minus 8 million people. And that made India to be the largest populated country in the world world. Now, the same population in the Africa as a continent where I uh, live and where I stay, probably a major portion of my life in this continent, um, about two, two and a half decades. And uh, so the African continent is uh, second biggest in the world, which has got about 30.3, nearly close to 31 million square kilometer land. That means it is less than half of uh, uh, less than double the size of the uh, Russian as a country. Now, looking into this population side of Africa, we got uh, more than uh, 1.4 billion people close by. So there are different statistics figures, but uh, according to the latest figures, Africa has got by and large the same population size that is equal to the size of uh, uh, China or India. So now we understand the population. Uh, we need to know about the, the relationships here. And before I touch the relationships, I would like to also uh, talk to you about the, the growth of population uh, on, on, on the pace uh, uh, on which we developed until today. It's uh, the population size, as I mentioned, about 8 billion. So if I ask the population size, or if I tell you the population size about 50,000 uh, years ago, we are not even 30,000 people living on this planet. If you take the 10,000 years ago, population is not that big enough. If I tell you the population of first century AD, when Jesus Christ was born, and the population was probably about 250 million. So the whole world population, 250 million, not long time ago, it was just a little about 2,000, 23 years ago. Now that population, 250 million, you can find in one state or one province of India, that is Uttar Pradesh state, which is the largely populated state in the whole country, but it's also one of the largely populated uh, 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 geographical jurisdiction in the whole world, actually, uh, because Nigerian population is uh, less than 220 million. Brazilian population is also probably 216 million. And um, uh, Pakistan population is also probably about 225, 230 million. So these um, Brazil, Nigeria, and uh, Pakistan, they are the largely populated countries. They are among the top 10 countries in the world, actually. So meaning that uh, maybe Nigeria occupies about uh, uh, seventh position, and maybe Brazil occupies about eighth position and Pakistan occupies about sixth position. So this is the kind of order I would like to touch upon. Now, why I'm saying all these things? Because uh, the population size, it, it, population is absolutely linked with human relationships. Therefore, the, I need to give you those statistical background. Now, as I mentioned that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the population was about 250 million about 2023 years ago, and that population is there in one state of India, for instance, or probably one country like Pakistan or Nigeria, or maybe Brazil, and maybe Indonesia, probably 280 million. And um, uh, America as the largest economy in the world, which has got about the population size, about 335 million. So if we take you, how we grow uh, as uh, uh, you know people, on this planet from 250, about 1,000 years ago, and that was 1,000, 1,050. If you look at the population size is about 450 million. So we grew 1,000 years 
it took us to become almost double the population actually, or less than double the population. It was 250 in the first century AD, 2050, that is about 1000 plus years, and we grow only 450 millions. And then that 450 millions is more than the population of America today. And then the first billion we, re we reached in the world world is uh, 1804. So 1804 is uh, close to 2000, uh, 220, uh, 219 years ago. The first billion, the population of this globe became number one or one, 1,000 millions or one billion is only about 2020 years ago. So that means the whole population for the last two, 1800 years from 250 million to 1 billion, that much space, that much time that we took. The second billion we became in 1927 actually. So again, from 1804 to 1927, there's also a, a gap of more than 100 plus years. And then last year, 15th of uh, uh, November, 2022, we became 8 billions. So in between, there are different periods that, uh, of course, uh, I don't want to go into the details of that. Why I'm saying all this population demographic statistics here? And uh, because the topic of today is human relationships. And the human relationships are being very fragile among the people. If you look at the monarch, or the British monarch, or any kind of monarch or royal, royal families, there is also a lot of issues within the royal families. If you take the British monarch itself, thousand years ago, and from William until Charles III, these are the kings. In between, there are a lot of people. I'm not going to touch the details of that, but they are killing each other. They're trying to behead uh, themselves among the families themselves to get the power. So power politics, they also try to strain the human relationships. The human relationships become very, very fragile, very, very uh, uh, probably, uh, what should I say that, uh, it became so crucial where uh, the trust among the people are losing drastically that they cannot even trust their own family members. Now, if I look at the human relationships, I would like to of course, this kind of trend is can be found in any royal family systems across the globe. We have the Mughal dynasty, starting from Babur, uh, who, found, who was the founder of the uh, Mughal Mughals in India, and from Babur to Aurangzeb, uh, whatever uh, Shah Jahan who built the Taj Mahal, uh, also human relationships are broken down number of occasions. The father or the son killed his own father to get the power. So these are the kind of things that regularly happened uh, throughout the world in all these uh, monarchies and uh, royal family systems that we talk about. So just uh, I would like to divide uh, the, uh, the, the relationships here. We have got the relationships that can be categorized into a number of varieties. I would like to take the first category of relationship is the family relationship. A family relationship, it could be uh, mother to child and father to child and uh, brothers, sisters and other siblings and uh, and so on. And grandfathers and grandmothers and great grandfathers and great grandfathers and so on. So the family relationship should be the strongest among all the relationships in the world because it's a kinship. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a link with our blood. And uh, so our parents are our creators actually. And therefore, uh, we need to be loyal to them. We need to be obey their kind of whatever the orders and whatever the instructions and suggestions and advices that they give us. So that is the strongest uh, human relationship one can think of because this is very tiny. There are not too many. There could be four, there could be 10, there could be less than 15 or 20. It depends upon the size of the family in general. So, then the second one could be the friendship relationships. So we do have the friends outside our families. We have the friends could be our colleagues, 
the friends could be our, um, our neighbors and friends could be anybody from uh, our different corners of the globe. Uh, so this is the friendship. And of course, uh, we have got acquaintanceship. We just get to know each other. Maybe uh, at one stage you're a stranger, but we just get to know each other. Now you bumped into a bank or bumped to a college, bumped into a supermarket and uh, maybe a shopping mall, and you just greet somebody and you just try to get an acquaintance. So uh, people that are acquainted with that, that is another category of the relationship that we have. So we do have uh, uh, romantic relationships, maybe among the wife and husband, wife and girlfriends, and probably in different ways, the romantic sizing the relationships could be. So these are the fundamentally, there are four types of relationships, ladies and gentlemen. And if I look at, if I refresh my memory as a student uh, of uh, economics and management, uh, probably about 35, more than 35 years ago, while I was doing my first degree, first undergraduate degree, um, and that was during 1987 to 1990, I still remember Elton Moyo, who is considered as the father of the scientific management. And he was in fact trying to define and establish the connections and relationships among the human beings. And he said that uh, human relationships are very, very uh, important. And he also said that uh, the relationships among the human beings uh, it can be called as a neoclassical approach or the relationship, whatever the way that we establish. And then he later coined a new term that is a, a clinical approach. So whichever the way, there are so many Many theories, hundreds and thousands of theories that have been developed uh, on human relationships and on um, how to establish the relationship. So I'm not going to touch those uh, human relationships in detail, but I would like to touch upon how fragile the human relationship could be. Now, I, as I mentioned that, uh, now what are the ways and what are the uh, of fundamental reasons that you can build up your relationship with other fellow human beings strongly, robustly uh, than ever before. So one thing is that the trust, the trust is so uh, important because a trust is something that you can build for decades together, but the trust, the same trust can broke into pieces uh, in no time, maybe in fraction of seconds. So even you better build a trust with your wife and husband for about 40 years or 50 years or whatever your lifetime. And the same trust can be break into pieces and in about a few seconds or minutes time. So trust is very important and uh, self-respect and self-acceptance. Uh, you need to accept other fellow human being as your friend, as your family member, as somebody that you can trust upon and that you can relate with, that you can correlate with, and you can spend time with, and you can do some business or you can do anything with. So that kind of trust is important. A loyalty is also very, very important. You don't need to be royal. You don't need to be rich to be a loyal. So loyal doesn't cost you anything as long as you're honest and as long as you are uh, you know, uh, sincere in your duties, in your commitment, in your dedication, in your relationships. And so therefore, ladies and gentlemen, now uh, these are the play, uh, uh, things that conflict resolution management. There could be misunderstanding because uh, our five fingers are not equal to each other. So they are different sizes. And in the same way, we human beings, 8 billion people, or even among our wife and husband, we come from different socioeconomic conditions. The different socioeconomic background, different locations in most cases. So therefore, uh, we are not equal to each other. And but these five hand, these five fingers, when we bend, they all will become equal to each other. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we need to bend ourselves as a human being, and that should be our approach. No matter you could be a rich man or a poor man, and no matter you could be a minister or a president or a MEC or a, um, a member of executive council or vice chancellor or a professor or a pun or a security guard or a doctor, whoever you are. But human relation, you're a human being fundamental. That is your first characteristic of anything else. So other things come later as we progress in our life. 
So therefore, every human being living on this planet is equally important. A President Biden of America is doing something at his role as a president and a, a security guard who is working for a small company in America is also playing his, his role. So no one is uh, more than um, the other fellow human being actually. So we try to develop uh, that kind of agony and that kind of uh, uh, dubious distinctions and uh, a pride and ego uh, among ourselves that no, I'm a rich man. I don't need to talk to these poor people. And I need to maintain, maintain a distance from them. And I'm a minister, I'm a president, I, I, I shouldn't reach the common man. So these are the barriers that we fix among ourselves and we divide the people. Uh, and we build more walls than the bridges to connect with the people actually. So it is important, ladies and gentlemen, in order to build the human relationship, we need to build the bridges. A bridge can be built among the two human beings or more than two human beings with our politeness, with our honesty, with our integrity, with our respect for the other fellow human being. That's why we say in Ubuntu, the South African uh, Zulu uh, philosophy, which says that uh, Ubuntu means I as a person is not as a human being without the support of other fellow human beings. So I became a person because of you. And that is fundamentally, it's also uh, connected with the Indian philosophy uh, of India that uh, uh, basically, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it says about uh, uh, the Vasudhaika Kutumbam. Uh, Vasudhaika Kutumbam here means that uh, we human beings, whether you're in uh, Nigeria, whether you're in America, UK, or uh, South Africa, or India, or Pakistan, Bangladesh, whichever country, or uh, maybe Somalia or Ethiopia, we are all one human being. So we are like one family, actually. If you look at the human race, the existence of the human race, maybe 250 million years ago, or whatever you talk about, and the fundamentally, the human, the center of the human beings, they started from our beloved African continent. So uh, to, to tell you the facts here that Ethiopia is considered to be the uh, cradle of mankind, other than Eve that grew up there. And uh, we have Lucy and uh, even I was there in the museum of uh, Addis Ababa where the Lucy's uh, that uh, the skeleton was kept. So if we say that Ethiopia won, South Africa is second and Morocco is the third. These are the three countries in the old world. The, the human beings started living in these three countries actually, maybe millions of years ago. That means that uh, whether you are white or brown or uh, black or uh, maybe whichever color that you talk about, we are all human beings connected with one root that is African continent. And uh, so we are brothers and sisters. That is why, as I said, that uh, Ubuntu philosophy, without you, I am not here. Without you, I'm not a person, I'm not a human being. And Indian philosophy says, Vasu Daika Kutundam, the whole world population is one family. So fundamentally, we try to divide among ourselves and we begin to create all these barriers, hurdles, rules, regulations controlling mechanisms and so on and so forth. Of course, they are one way or the other way, they could be good enough for us to live in harmony and to fix some rules and regulation. But most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, we are discriminating among ourselves. The human discrimination on racial grounds, on sexual grounds, on maybe on territorial grounds, or geographical grounds, or ethnical grounds, and language grounds, and so on and so forth. So that is actually dividing this world. We are here to help each other. And meaning that uh, we are creating problems for ourselves. 90% of the problems uh, we as human being, we create for ourselves. Only 10%, they are not in our hand. They are all God made or probably nature made problems like tsunamis, earthquakes, accidents, and so on. But most of the problems that we create ourselves with our behavior, with our attitude, the way we talk to the people, actually. 
we must remember one important point, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, the human body is a complex system and uh, it has got uh, probably close to about 50 trillion cells that are there in our human body. And every cell has got the power of 1.4 watts of energy. So that means that on an average, every human being is having an energy of about 70 trillion watts of energy. And one of, most of us, we don't know what, how powerful we are actually. Although we are powerful people, but when we look at our own body, if we don't take shower or uh, bath, maybe in a day or two, our body smells, our sweat smells, our urine smells, our poo smells, and everything that is coming from our body smells badly. So because although we are powerful people and our bodies, if we die and we also smell very badly, that means only one thing that can make a sweet is your tongue. The way you speak to the people, the way you communicate with the people, the way you treat the other fellow human beings with your kindness and with your generosity, with your smile, with your love and with your care. Those are the only things that can make you as a sweet person, that can make other human beings think that you are the, the great and extraordinary human being. Otherwise, everything comes from our body is smelling very bad. So ladies and gentlemen, that is why the communication plays a crucial role in our human relationships. It could be a relationship between wife and husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, father and son, and uh, father and daughter, and nephews, and maybe mother and uh, children, father and children, and so on and so forth. So which your relationship we talk about, the way we treat the human being with respect, utmost respect. That's why we say namaste in Indian culture, the meaning of namaste is none other than I'm saluting uh, a other fellow human being who is equal to a divine, who is equal to a God himself or herself. When I say namaste that a divine in me is saluting a divine in you, that means you are a divine. You are equal to a God. When I think that when I go to church or when I go to mosque or when I go to Hindu temples or uh, any other uh, uh, religious worshiping places, I don't be disrespectful. I always try to follow the rules and I always respect the Jesus Christ and all other gods that Allah and maybe Bhagavan, Lord Shiva, and Lord Krishna, Lord Vishnu and whoever they are among the Hindu belief. So we don't be disrespectful in the religious places. Why? Because we think that God is watching us, doing something unusual, doing something uh, is not correct. So if when I consider you as a human being, uh, you are equal to God, I cannot disrespect you in any manner. So if all the human beings, if they respect each other, the way that you want to be respected by other fellow human beings, the most of the problems, most of the problems in this world can be solved or we can provide better solutions for the problems actually. The problems among the human beings is growing rapidly because there is no justice and whatever we do, there is no justice. Whether it's in political relationships, whether it is ethical relationships, whether it is language relationships or human relationships in gender. So there's no justice. When there's no justice, ladies and gentlemen, there is no peace also. So the world becoming a battlefield, the Russia, Ukraine is fighting. There are so many countries, they have differences, Congo, DRC Congo and uh, Rwanda, and maybe many other countries in African continent, they are fighting among themselves because we think we place money materials more than the human beings. So money materials are there for us to utilize as a devices in transactions or to betterment of our lives. Human beings are there to respect and to live in harmony with them. 
but we are using using the human beings for our own benefit and we are respecting the uh, money and uh, materials in a different place so that is creating imbalances among ourselves so therefore ladies and gentlemen human relationships they play a crucial role now we have got so many millions of orphans in this world they don't have parents they don't have caregivers they don't have any kind of a orphan grows and somebody doesn't have a father mother and the social structures are very weak and if they grow big they may become violent people actually because they don't know the love and affection they don't know the morals the values of a family system so therefore uh, the society is very very important uh, in in bringing up any human being in this world and hence both the the relationships became very fragile particularly in this modern world particular for the past 20 years down the line we have got so many social networks across the world it could be facebook it could be instagram it could be twitter or uh, linkedin any other social network because of the social networks people are not being honest among themselves wife is not honest with the husband and husband is equally not honest with the wife they are trying to make extra marital relationships that creating problems within the family system they have been living together for 20 years 30 years down the line suddenly something comes up and something deviates something disturbs and destroys the relationships so there is no trust they have been living together for 30 years as wife and husband but suddenly trust is broken into pieces so these are the things artificial intelligence machine learning blockchain and uh, all this technology cloud technology that we talk about number of people are becoming unemployed when somebody is employed today and tomorrow is unemployed and the families that are depending upon him the relationships again break so therefore there are so many factors economical factors we we say pestle analysis in uh, in our management we talk about uh, pestle political economical social technological legal and environmental we also talk about various things like swot analysis the strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats so ladies and gentlemen whatever we talk among the human relationships all these factors pastel factors that i mentioned to you right now they also play a crucial role in the human relationships i was mentioning to you earlier that british monarchy If we go back to the history of British monarchy, thousand years ago, thousand forty-three until nineteen two thousand twenty-three. If you look at the relationships, you will understand what I am speaking about. There are many cases that own brother killed his own brother because of the power monarchy, and that is that happened in every every part of the world. So, if you don't trust your own brother, bloodly brother and sister, then who to whom else you can trust actually? so this is what and there are brothers they hate among themselves more than their friends there are a, a just we met an acquaintanceship and acquaintanceship sometimes become more stable and more reliable than our own brothers and sisters within our own family structures that's not good therefore the societies that we are living today ladies and gentlemen is very weak in south africa i just would like to give you some example 75% of the mothers they are single mothers they don't have the father figures at all actually and when a single mother is raising a child and how what kind of impact is going to create on the child actually the child is becoming more violent and sometimes they may be exposed to drugs and uh, narcotics and other kind of uh, 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 illegal activities than building some morals ethics respect for themselves and respect for other fellow human beings so therefore ladies and gentlemen there are various factors in the relationships that will also vary a lot and that will also play a great uh, uh, that will also influence greatly on the human relationship so ultimately a political system if we talk about the land 
a country, people, and also the governance system. And these things are fundamental for every country's development. If the society is not strong enough, the human relationships are not strong enough, they become very weak. So whatever we build, whether it is a rich economy like America or poor economy like Burundi, where it has got $250 as per capita income, whereas Luxembourg and uh, maybe Qatar or Singapore, they got $132,000 as per capita income. Whether you are rich or poor, but if your societal structures are not stable, if your human relationships are not stable, you are going to crack and you're going to break. Into so therefore, human relationships plays a, a very, very important role in the socio-economic development. If we work hard in harmony, if we work hand in hand with our colleagues in an industry, in a mining company, or in an educational institution, or maybe a small firm or a business, whatever that we talk about, then the harmony, the trust, the loyalty, the politeness, all these factors contribute a lot for our human relationships that will make more stronger action, more better. If we have that kind of healthy relationships, then we can also build up our company and our own firm that we are dealing with. And then if every company or every organization that build on those structures of ethos, values, morals, respect, care, love, and that relationship is different from the relationship where you don't find these, these factors. So the, the human relationships ultimately, if you build up without having these fundamentals and that relationship or that structure is going to be top heavy and bottom weak, it's not going to be sustainable. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time, uh, I would like to uh, conclude by stating that no matter whatever religion that we come from, no matter whatever background that we come from, whether we are rich, poor, or middle class, whichever we come from, whether our parents are uh, maybe agricultural farmers or could be medical doctors, we, whatever background that we come from, but we need to build a human relationship with other fellow human beings because human beings, Aristotle said uh, that uh, man is a social animal. We are all animals actually, but we are social animals. So therefore, without other fellow human beings, we are not in existence at all. If you want to become a president or prime minister, you need the support of everybody. If you want to become a medical doctor, you also need to, you're not only serving, but also there are other people also serving you back. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the human relationships are crucial. And every human being in this world, they must respect their mother because mother is the creator and they must respect and love their father. That's why in India, we say that Matru Devo Bhava, that is a Sanskrit slogan, Mother, your mother is equal to goddess. Pitru Deva Bhava, your father is equal to God. Acharya Deva Bhava, your teacher, your guru, your professor is equal to God. Atidi Deva Bhava, that is your guest. It could be your, your neighbor or somebody coming from outside and whoever they are, your guest is also equal to God. If you respect these four people in this world, that means you are respecting major portion of the society. And with that respect, you build a very good relationship. And with that, you can also build a very strong society and strong economy. And so that every one of, every one of us living on this planet, we live with peace, happiness, love, care, and most stability. So with these few words, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank uh, our sister, uh, Professor uh, Queen Elizabeth Lucas uh, for bringing me on board to share some of my views here. There's a lot to talk, but uh, I have to cut it down because of the interest of time. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> of course, I always have uh, platforms in the future. Yes, you can international. The yes, you can international itself is an icon that 
every human being that they could that they could that they could able to do a lot in this world. That is why impossible is not a fact; it's only an opinion. So, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank once again to all the viewers and all the listeners, and also pro for patiently sitting and listening to me. And uh, thank you, Ananda. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Ravida Rina from South Africa. Despite of your schedule, time, uh, your busyness, you still set up a time to come and share with us a powerful, um, mess, a powerful topic with us today. Human relationship is very, very important. I was telling somebody recently, I said, no matter how we have moved from um, reality of natural things to technology in terms of business, professionalism, economy, whatever we're doing that we're trying to move it into this uh, and to embrace this technology world. We cannot replace human being. Human being is very important. And I like it that you're sharing and reminding us again that human relationship is very important. Imagine having robot. <laughs> Imagine having robots in our lives talking to us every day. That's not right enough. I remember recently in the because I work in the hospital as well as an admin, and there was a time early this um, last year they introduced uh, these uh, robots, where well, we call it robot a machine, so that will be doing the cleaning. <laughs> they will be doing the cleaning. And then that makes it to reduce the cleaner's job, isn't it? But by the time, even to, up to today, that robot didn't last. <laughs> it only works for probably six months. And also I could remember as, yes, I can also remember this technology we are talking about. It's so easy because since after COVID pandemic, majority of us have moved our business to um, online. And sometimes while you are still on the conference, you are still sharing and discussing, it's so easy for, for connectivity to fail us. <laughs> it's so easy for uh, uh, internet to fail us. And that can distract and disrupt and even stop the meeting to go on. So you can see that in reality, human being cannot be replaced. <laughs> and that is why it's so important that we continue building our human relationship. You cannot replace it with anything. We appreciate the world of technology. We appreciate the, the other parts, which is the animals. We have to love the animals because they are also creatures. But at the same time, we cannot replace or neglect or ignore human relationship. And that is what you've shared with us today, which is very, very important. Imagine if there's, yes, it's good of this online because I am not in Nigeria, I'm not in South Africa, I'm not in India, but we can still communicate together. So it's a platform. We can treat it as a platform to come together, but we cannot replace it with human being. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time this afternoon this morning, this evening. And I, I noticed that a lot of people have really contributed on the Facebook as well. So they enjoy your teaching. They said, right on, Prof. 
<laughs> so we are moving on. And I really also like the fact that you said we need to bend ourselves as human beings. And I think to that, it makes me to realize that no matter the position you find yourself, no matter the title you have to your name, humility is very important and empathy. We have to show empathy to one another and we also have to humble ourselves. Why? Because we are not perfect and we don't know it all. And we are still human beings. So that is, and I really appreciate that as well. You also say that human relationship contributes to economy of a country. It contributes to the community. It contributes to the society. And it also contributes to the nation. Imagine if we have a healthy human relationship, there will be peace all over the world. There will be peace and there will be no war because we will get, I keep on improving ourselves to get better, understanding ourselves and understanding others. And what you know, you will respect it most. So if you don't know and if you don't understand, you cannot respect. Instead, you can abuse. So that is also very, very important. I also like the place he said, man or a woman is a social animal. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> so just to let you know that I'm not sitting there, I'm learning, I'm gaining from that as well. It's a social animal. So where there is no justice, there is no peace and there's no freedom. So that is why we have to take our relationship very serious. Everything that is happening in the whole world is down to one thing, the misuse of our relationship. So, and that is why we will continue as YYCI, bringing and inviting and welcoming great world leaders to come and share on this platform so that we can learn together, share together and make a difference in this world. Former president of a country, uh, for USA, um, Barack Obama said, we are not waiting for anyone else or some time to make this change. We are the one to make that change. Until we start to understand that and take action towards that and change our mindset there will be no change. Also, one of our great leaders as well, um, I think it is Richard Branson or um, what's the man of the computer now? He said that technology, yes, but human being is more, the way we treat human being is more important than technology. Technology is a system. But we are human beings and we need to build that one. Another person also said, you can have the whole world. But for you, I think it is uh, former President uh, uh, Obama's wife that says this. Michelle. That Sorry? Mm. Sorry? Michelle Obama. Yeah, Michelle. He said that yeah. to be successful is when you impart into other people's lives. So you might gain the whole world, gain the world title, gain the whole wealth in the world. But the most important thing is when you impart into other people's lives. And that is to round up your message to say, thank you so much, sir, because we are learning every day and we cannot stop learning because learning is living. And if we want to change, if we want to transform our relationship, our leadership, we need to renew our mindset. And that is why mindset is everything. So thank you so much for sharing with us today.
checking my time is 12.14. I'm supposed to be the third, third speaker, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> because if I should say, oh, what do you think, Professor Fabio? I'm also sharing now. I don't have to really, really like do, uh, do it like a former. We are all learning. I'm also sharing as you are sharing. I'm accepting what you've shared with us. I'm learning from it. And I'm also sharing by recapping what you've shared with us. So that is also speaking. So <laughs> I've already done my own bit as well. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much for the 